sports team, a hit movie, why aren't these things inherently valuable? Well, the answer is, they are inherently valuable. But you know what else is inherently valuable, which is a very good analogy? Cash. A sweet Benjamin. <laughs> Does anybody think that a Benjamin is not valuable? And people do walk around saying, cash is king. And cash is king. <clears throat> so that is why people try to rob banks. <laughs> but that does not make for a great business. The real question is, is it possible to buy a Benjamin for less than 100 bucks? And if you found a way to do that, you should do it, and you should do it all day long. What we find in the media industry, which explains those returns, is that generally people are buying Benjamins for $110 or $120. <laughs> it doesn't mean that those things aren't valuable. It, the question is whether or not a shareholder is going to do well by your, by your purchasing. A great example uh, of this is Marvel. It was a broad auction. Disney buys it. Why did Disney buy it? Is there some synergy? Do they do something that, that nobody else can do with Marvel? Well, the reality is the reason they bought it is because, in fact, they couldn't do that. That is, Marvel is a very young male-oriented company. Disney has tried desperately for years uh, to get into that space and failed. When Marvel licenses their products, what do they find? The high bidder, i.e. the person who can exploit it most effectively, is never Disney. In fact, every other studio wins some auctions, but not Disney. So the only way that they can win is by overpaying it. And not only do they have to overpay, that is, pay more than the people who can exploit it better, once they buy it, they then had to pay to break all the contracts with the people who had already bought the rights in previous transactions. That's how people destroy value over time. What I'd like to end with is the topic of digital and convergence creating opportunity, embracing the internet. Clearly, if you are doing a startup, it's great to have the internet because it allows you to attack an incumbent. But in most cases, you are the incumbent. And indeed, whatever it is that allowed you to attack the incumbent will allow the next guy to attack you. And for an incumbent to say that it's their strategy to embrace the internet is a dangerous thing for the following reason. If you think about what the true sources of barriers to entry, which is indeed the whole uh, uh, concept underlying our basic strategy classes, which are economies to scale, economies of scale, customer captivity, proprietary technology, and government protection, and think about what is the impact of, of digital on each of those things. Well, economies of scale go down. Economies of scale really are what's the fixed costs required to produce a business. And sure, the CEO of the New York Times announced he was thrilled about the internet because now he can do everything cheaper. Of course, he discovered afterwards that everybody else could do it cheaper, and before only he could do it, and do it more expensively because of the fixed cost barriers. And the impact on increased competition always swamps the benefits of lowering your fixed costs. Customer captivity, which is another source of advantage, goes down because it becomes easier to switch. Proprietary technology becomes easier and more accessible to others. The one thing that is a good source of competitive advantage that is not hurt by things that are digital are government protection, and you can still lobby effectively. So you have that uh, to, uh, to hold on to.